the Board of Education in Alaska has voted to support banning biological males from competing in girls' high school sports. Supporters say the measure ensures fairness in girls' sports. The proposal now heads to the Republican Attorney General. At least 22 states have laws that prevent biological boys from competing on girls' sports team. Well, one person who knows a lot about women's and girls' sports is Sage Steele, a longtime sportscaster and a staple on ESPN for more than a decade. But when she appeared on a podcast in 2021 and gave her opinion on the COVID vaccine mandates and a few other topics that some deemed controversial, things changed. Steele says that she was taken off of assignments and her dream job became a hostile work environment. She filed a lawsuit alleging her free speech rights were squashed, and earlier this month, she and the network settled the suit. And Sage Steele joins us now to talk about her journey, what's next, and how her Catholic faith is carrying her through it all. Sage, so good to be with you. Um, a lot I want to discuss, but first, I want to ask you about women's sports and what we're seeing right now with transgender athletes. I mean, we just mentioned that Alaska is banning biological males from competing in girls' sports, and at least 22 other states have similar measures in place. So I want to get your thoughts on that, and where do you think all this is going? First of all, I commend those lawmakers and governors in those states who are enacting those laws and signing them into law. I just, it makes me crazy that they even have to waste their time doing this for something that we all know um, is ridiculous, that we've had to go to these lengths and these depths of conversations to discuss. Um, this is not controversial. I, I have said this for months and months and months. Um, that whole science word that everybody <laughs> threw at us during COVID and they wanted us to follow the science. Um, we are following the science with this, and everybody knows the differences between men and women, especially on the sports field, court, whatever. It just makes me sad because, you know, I've worked, and I'm sure you have as well, I mean, so many years trying to uplift other women, especially women in sports. And I've done work with Billie Jean King and so many of these true trailblazers who were part of all the greatness that has come to women on the sports field, um, thanks to Title IX. And I, I really am shocked at how many steps backwards we continue to take, and really big steps, quickly. Um, to me, and I've said this before, I will continue to say it, if we don't continue to address it and be loud about it, right, and push these lawmakers to do what they're doing in Texas and Alaska and other, other states, um, it, we're in trouble because we have seen some things in some instances where young women have been hurt. Yeah, and we have got to talk about, and thank you so much for talking about it and kind of keeping the pressure on. I also want to talk about you now. Um, I know this really has been, you know, quite a time for you, especially since you settled your lawsuit last month and left ESPN. So I'm wondering, you know, how are you doing, Sage? Oh, thank you for asking. Uh, I think it's a good question. Should be a simple answer. <laughs> Uh, I'm doing well because I have really good perspective. I have a really great circle around me. Right before I sat down to speak with you, Tracy, I was upstairs talking to my mom. Um, and I have a lot of other things going on in my life outside of my unemployment factor, I guess, right now with my parents and a move recently and my dad's health with two kinds of cancer, um, kids in college, my senior in high school, and she's a girl. There's always drama with girls, right? So there's a lot that has kept me distracted um, I'm kind of getting over the sadness part, which is nice. I'm getting over the sadness of not being there with a couple of my awesome teammates um, because I know that I'm right where I'm supposed to be, even if it's a little bit uncomfortable. I want to talk, just kind of give people perspective, um, kind of what led up to your lawsuit. I know you said a few things during a podcast a few years ago. Um, wasn't on the network, wasn't for the network, um, but it did get you into some hot water. Um, for those not familiar, can you tell us what exactly it was you said in that podcast, in particular what it had to do with the vaccine mandates and really kind of made you, if I can say this, a pariah in a way? Yeah, I will say I've talked so much about it and it's so well documented. I don't want to get too much into it anymore. I am trying to kind of move past it. Um, I think the whole point of my lawsuit is lack of consistency. And we cannot allow, and this is not just for ESPN or Disney, um, it's for any corporation, right? But um, we cannot allow some people to speak their minds about anything, anything they want, and then others who might have a differing opinion to be silenced, and not just silenced, but punished and made an example of. So all I ever wanted 
was consistency and the rules to be the same for everybody. I think I happen to be the only one speaking out with um, maybe somewhat center-right opinions. Um, and again, I did it, to your point, on my off day, not on our airwaves, when everyone else has been able to talk about very political things, non-sports related, on ESPN airwaves. And so the hypocrisy was really thick for me. And it, listen, it had been many years leading up to that, um, many examples, and that was just enough. <laughs> um, I, I will say about the vaccine, and it was not about the shot, it's about the mandate and being forced to do that. And I complied. I took that shot, even though I didn't agree with it. I didn't believe in it at that time. Um, I know I won't be taking any ever again, that's for sure. Vaccines, boosters that are related to COVID, I won't, um, because I think we've learned a lot. All I wanted at that time two years ago was to have more research and science around it. Let me learn about it before we do this to ourselves and our, more importantly to me is my kids. And then I was forced to do something. I complied. I had an opinion about it while complying and then was silenced for that opinion. So, um, you know, I think it's funny if I had gotten out and said, you know, shame on my neighbors over there. They're anti-vaxxers and they don't care about me or anyone else. I probably would have been celebrated, you know, because a lot of people did say that, that I work with um, and no repercussions there. So let's just, as corporations, as leaders, let's just be consistent with the rules and then you don't have these issues.